Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to show how the lipoprotein LDL delivers cholesterol to all sorts of cells of our body. One of the purposes for cholesterol delivery to cells is so that those cells can put cholesterol in their membranes. So remember that cholesterol stabilizes the fluidity of the membrane over a wider range of temperatures. So in other words, what it does is it allows the membrane to be fluid at both hot temperatures and cold temperatures. And theoretically, you don't want the temperature to vary a huge amount, of course. But again, keeping those membranes as fluid as possible. So as mammals, every one of our cells has cholesterol in its membrane, very important. Other types of cells will transform that cholesterol into other types of molecules, like steroids, such as testosterone, estradiol, cortisol, and then also bile acids. Uh, for example, the liver makes bile acids, which are components of bile, which helps the small intestine emulsify fat from the diet. So there's a lot of purposes of getting cholesterol to cells. And the liver manufactures LDL, low-density lipoprotein, and its major job is to deliver cholesterol to cells. Now, we covered this in a previous video, but cholesterol is actually packaged in a modified form called a cholesterol ester. It's basically cholesterol, but it has a fatty acid that's been esterified to its hydroxyl group, and it makes this transformed type of molecule called the cholesterol ester. And you can see the general structure of this lipoprotein in green. This is the protein component. And then all the lipids, the things that are hydrophobic and don't like water, are packaged on the inside in yellow here. And so one of those is the cholesterol ester. So let's consider for a moment this cell right here. It could be a skeletal muscle cell. It could be any cell. Well, let's suppose that it has low cholesterol in its membrane. It needs more cholesterol. This is a very tightly regulated process. So whenever a cell is depleted of cholesterol, or at least it's low, it won't be totally depleted, otherwise it'd be dead, but it'll start to display these receptors in its membrane. And the lower the cholesterol content of the cell, the more of these receptors there will be in the membrane. It's a type of negative feedback. If the cell has plenty of cholesterol and doesn't need any more, then these receptors won't be very concentrated in the membrane. But these receptors are a way of signaling to LDL that's floating by, hey, I need some cholesterol, okay? So again, when the cell is low on cholesterol, these LDL receptors are deposited into the membrane of that cell. And that's perfect because these LDL particles, they like to stick onto these LDL receptors. That makes sense, they're receptors for LDL. And so the first step we have here is LDL binding, okay? So this LDL particle gets uh, bound to these receptors. And then we have something called receptor-mediated endocytosis. That's step two here. So this internalization, to be very specific, it's receptor-mediated endocytosis. So as soon as this LDL particle binds to these LDL receptors, there's some changes in the shape of the membrane, and essentially the LDL is engulfed and pulled in. And it's internalized here in this endosome. This is an endosome. Okay, now the endosome will actually, first of all, it will discard um, all of these LDL receptors. So those actually, as you can see right here, in the form of smaller endosomes, they will actually be returned to the plasma membrane. Okay, so they are recycled. But the remainder of the contents here of this endosome, they will com combine in step three here with a lysosome. Now a lysosome is an organelle that exists in pretty much all cells. And the lysosome is going to contain all sorts of enzymes that are destructive in nature. It contain hydrolytic enzymes, proteolytic enzymes, there's also reactive oxidative species, acid, basically something to degrade everything inside that endosome. And although it's not shown, there would be a lysosome that combines with this endosome to form a lysoendosome, okay? And that's this structure right here. And once the lysosome has fused with the endosome, uh, all the enzymes that were present in the lysosome and the acid and all that good stuff just starts busting up everything inside that endosome. Well, what was inside that endosome was an LDL particle. So all these protein components separate from the lipids in yellow. 
And these lipids in yellow, recall what they were, they were cholesterol esters, okay? Now, one very specific cholesterol ester is cholesterol oleate. Oleate is a fatty acid. So this is one example of a fatty acid that's esterified to cholesterol. And when oleic acid or oleate is esterified to cholesterol, it makes specifically cholesterol oleate. But this is just one example of a cholesterol ester. And so whenever we get that, uh, that acid and that hydrolysis, the cholesterol oleates and other cholesterol esters separate from the protein. The protein is broken down by proteolytic enzymes into little bitty amino acids, which are then recycled. But then those cholesterol oleates or cholesterol esters, they then have to have the fatty acid removed from them. So there are some enzymes that chop off that fatty acid, or in this case, the oleate, and regenerate cholesterol. And that cholesterol is really just going to congregate um, along membranes within the cell. So this endomembrane system, this is really just the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, the, particularly the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The cholesterol congregates there. Now the reason cholesterol is going to congregate in the smooth ER is not only because there are enzymes there that can process cholesterol, but remember that cholesterol itself is a hydrophobic molecule. It doesn't like water. That's the entire reason that cholesterol in this form of the ester has to be packaged in a lipoprotein. It can't just float through the blood. It's hydrophobic. So even when it gets in the cell here, it has to bind to internal membranes within the cell, like the endoplasmic reticulum. Now you say, well, what good does that do us? We want some of the cholesterol to go into the membranes. Well, it turns out that there are proteins, specific proteins in cells, that can bind cholesterol and then transport them to the membrane. Okay, so that's how the cell gets around the fact that these are now clustered at the endoplasmic reticulum. But also, as I mentioned, or alluded to, in the smooth ER, there are other enzymes that can process cholesterol and convert it into different molecules. So for example, if this were a cell in the testes of males, or maybe the ovaries in females, or even the adrenal cortex, there are enzymes in the smooth ER, and actually some in the mitochondria as well, that can process cholesterol and turn them into different things like progesterone, cortisol, testosterone, estradiol, and so on and so forth. What the important thing to understand here about the LDL delivery of cholesterol to cells is notice that the LDL is completely engulfed by the cell. So it's not like it just drops off cholesterol. Okay, That's what we saw with the fatty acid delivery from the VLDLs. For LDL, the entire particle is engulfed, combined with a lysosome, and all the contents are degraded. The protein part of the lipoprotein, that is degraded into amino acids, which are recycled. The lipid components, the cholesterol esters, separate and are converted back to cholesterol, which is then initially stored really just on the smooth ER. Okay? And then that cholesterol can be transported to different parts of the cell membrane, depending on where it's needed or enzymatically processed. So hopefully this video gave you a good overview of LDL delivery of cholesterol to cells. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.